Hey everybody, I'm Tim Hepworth here with Fly Fishing Boat for Outfitters and Thursday Night Live Fly Tying and I'm here to bring you another quick tie. Tonight we're doing uh, episode 8 from season 4 and we are tying the evil olive nymph, okay? I'm going to go ahead and open up my kit here. If you've got one just like this, go ahead and open it as well. If you don't, we can still purchase these off our website. Head over to www.flyfishingbowriver.com backslash TNL S4 and you can still get your kit today. I'm going to go ahead and open this up. We're looking for this one right here. See if it uh, get it to come in for us. <laughs> Anyways, that is season four, episode eight. We're gonna go ahead. If you look into the back of this kit, you're gonna have a fly that's got yellow in it. That's the one we're gonna be tying here first. Let's head on over the vise and get started. So this is a small fly today, guys. This is gonna be a size 16. This is a beta imitation, so it's gonna be pretty small. What I'm using is some UTC 70 in olive. It is important that you got the olive thread, even if it's not this size. We want you to use an olive for this one today. So I'm gonna come in here. I'm gonna start my thread behind the bead. Get that good and secure. Go ahead and trim it out. Now we've got a few materials we're gonna put in here today and it kinda gets a little convoluted at times, but just stick with me and we'll get through it. If you open up your kit, you're gonna see a piece of size small gold wire okay this is the first thing we're gonna tie in we're gonna tie it in just behind the bead so I'm gonna get it here I'm gonna do it on the near side of the fly kind of tuck it up into that bead and we're gonna take that thread and get it secured all the way down deep into the bend bring it back up make sure it's all smoothed out I'm gonna go down one more time leave my thread there now, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna use um, a yellow mallard flank, okay? You can see that color there. We're gonna use this for the tail and also um, a bit of the thorax we're gonna do out of this material. We're gonna tie it in all at once and keep using it. Okay, so I'm gonna strip the fuzzies off the bottom of this feather. And then I wanna find a good chunk of the longest portion of the feather that I can. So I'm gonna grab that right there good chunk of it I'm gonna pull it off trying to keep the butts aligned meaning that likely the tips are aligned too okay so first thing I got to do is I got to tie in just the tail so you're gonna tie it in with just a couple of loose wraps and then we'll get it secured where we need it to so I'm just gonna do one two and I'm gonna basically lift that up and adjust my threads back slightly so it's right at the edge of the bend and then I wanna pull back on this and I'm gonna be able to pull my tail shorter. So I want my tail to be about the same length as the hook gap. So from the hook shank to the, to the point of the hook. So I just grab that and I'm gonna pull it. Get a little smaller. So I got my length proper. And then I'm gonna take some thread wraps. Moving forward, I wanna keep it right on top of the hook shank as it goes up all the way up right to behind the bead leave it right there then I'm gonna take a quick half hitch just to save my work so it's not going anywhere get that out of the way and now what I'm gonna do here guys is I'm gonna create a nice underbody so I'm gonna bring my thread back here real quick I want to color up all that yellow I have a little bit of a tapered underbody, not too much, not too worried about it because the thorax on this fly is quite large. So I'm gonna go down and up just to make sure it's pretty even. Now I'll throw a quick half hitch again just to save my work. And then I'm gonna take my wire, my gold wire, and just do some nice even wraps forward. Try to get them evenly spaced. And once I get to my thread, I'll bring my thread back in secure it off you can either helicopter that or you can grab an old crummy pair of scissors and trim it out on these smaller flies I do like to use the scissors because I'm gonna get real close with it trim that out okay now <clears throat> from this point here what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take and pull that back one more time take a few thread wraps over just leaving a little bit of a space for a thorax here right up at the head and then when I finish, I'm gonna pull this back over one more time, okay? That's how it's gonna finish, it's gonna come back over. I'm gonna readjust this in here just a bit, just so it's a little easier to work with and see. 
Now, next thing I'm going to do here, guys, I'm going to go in and grab some of this nice olive sparkle dub we've got here. Okay. Now, we're going to use very little of this. Just a tiny pinch, making about an inch and a half dubbing noodle. Very thin, okay? We don't want to overdo it on this. Nice and thin. We're going to wrap this up. We want it to be nice and, nice and bulbous. Little thorax without overdoing it too much. If you've got some strays, we can always go in there and trim those out so that they're not interfering with being able to see the rest of the fly. I'll take care of a few of those right now. Just like that, I'm happy with how that looks. Now the, <clears throat> the kind of the last material we're gonna tie in here is we just have a piece of crystal flash. I'm gonna double it over so that it makes two strands. I'm gonna cut that in the middle. And then what it's gonna give me here, guys, is two separate strands, one, two. I'm gonna align the tips on them just so they're kind of even. And now I'm gonna come in here with my thread and I'm gonna tie it in just behind the bead. Okay, once I kind of have one side locked, oh, that came out on me one more time. So this material is quite slippery, so you wanna make sure you get it in there really good. So if we tie it on top like this, take one more thread wrap to secure, then I'm gonna bring the other side back and diagonal in between them one more time. Kind of like you're almost tying in dumbbell eyes, the same idea. We're just not gonna get too crazy about it. Just so that they are secure. Kind of pulled down to the sides on either side. And then I'm gonna pull them back and take a couple more thread wraps so it almost encourages them to point rearward because that's how we want this to finish is with those pointed rearward. Okay, so last thing I'm gonna do here, guys, is I'm gonna pull this little, what's left of that mallard flank forward in between that crystal flash. And I'm gonna pin that down right behind the bead, right on top of the hook. So when you look at it like that, you created that top of the thorax using the rest of that mallard flank. And it causes those wings to wanna point back down the fly. And we'll trim those here just momentarily. We want to come in here and we want to trim this off kind of as close as we can get it, but don't get too concerned about it as we are going to put some UV resin up here on top. Now I'm going to come in here and grab my whip finish tool and I'm going to come in here and I'm going to whip finish just behind the bead. Two or three turns is going to be enough as we're going to put some resin on here. Make sure that's good and tight. Come in here, trim out that thread. Now I'm going to pull those that crystal flash back. And I'm gonna run my scissors up. Ooh, get the stuff off my scissors first here. I'm gonna run my scissors up the back of the hook and right on that bend and kind of lay my scissors there and trim. So that gives me that really good length. Looks like some legs pointed rearward, just like so. Okay, it looks pretty good already. The last little thing I'm gonna do here, as you can see here, that's kind of the overall size and appearance with my tail hanging down. I'll get it locked in here one more time just to put the resin on. And this takes very, very little resin, so don't overdo it. We just want to put a little dab behind the bead and over the thorax to secure that in place. So I'm using some <clears throat> Solarez Thin Hard Formula here with the thin applicator. It's got to be careful that you don't, the problem is when you put this on, sometimes it likes to come out all at once. Just right back to the edge of the thorax, up onto the bead. Gonna make sure it covers over both sides. Hit it with the torch. And there you have it guys. That is our evil olive. A great little betis imitation, blue wing olive imitation. Uh, I encourage you to have some of these in your box. You can vary up the colors. I like this version with the yellow, but try a few different ones and, and see what works for you. So again, guys, I'm Tim Hepworth with Fly Fishing Bover Outfitters and Thursday Night Live Fly Tying. We really appreciate if you if you leave a comment. Let us know that you are watching these quick ties so you know you're still in here. It helps us and it encourages us to see that you follow and subscribe. Till next time, we'll go again. <laughs>